Hello and welcome to the podcast show today and we are very excited to have the amazing Nikki Cousins on our show today and um, just in introducing Nikki, she's an occupational therapist with experience across Newcastle, Central Coast and Sydney, that's in New South Wales and Nikki has worked as a senior neuro, neurological and general physical occupational therapist and even more importantly, Nikki is my friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nikki has a keen interest in stroke, evidence-based practice, cognitive, perceptual disorders and dementia. And Nikki grew up in um, the Hunter area and she's returned to raise her family and to start a client-centred OT specialist private practice in East Maitland, which is called Action OT, which started in 2016 and is now a boutique practice specialising in adults and adolescents transitioning to adult services. But in her spare time, Nikki's partner and three sons keep her busy and active. And in addition to spending time with friends and family, she enjoys travel. Hopefully you'll get to do that again soon. Bushwalking, swimming and experiencing the many delights of the Hunter Valley. That's so welcome amazing. to the show today, Nikki. Thank you, Kaz. And yes, I like number one, um, absolutely your friend. Yes. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, so in getting started, why don't you tell us something that most people don't know about you or many people don't know about you? Um, I always think everybody knows this about me, but then when I tell people, they get really surprised. So um, I lived in Japan for a year when I finished school and I wouldn't say I'm fluent in Japanese anymore because it's not a language I get to use very often, but I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty okay. So I can get by. So um if you if you have a Japanese speaking client ever, you know, <laughs> I think I've had two in my whole career. Let me know. <laughs> was that with Rotary Exchange? It was with Rotary Exchange. Yes, that was yeah. my foray into Rotary. So I'm now a Rotarian. Yes. Um, shout out to the East Maitland Rotary Club, uh, one of the best Rotary clubs around. I love my Rotary work, but yeah, that's what got me involved in um in Rotary now. My initial introduction to Rotary and. Here I am 20 years later now as a Rotarian giving back to the community and involved in um, actually sending out the exchange students. When they go, they can't go at the moment, but hopefully um, in another six months or so, they'll look at, um, look at, start it, <laughs> starting to look at the program again. So, um, yeah, but, I, but yeah, that was um, such a great experience in my life living overseas. For a year, I left when I was 17. Um, so I had to grow up very, very fast. <laughs> Yeah, and it sounds like, yeah, such a great experience. And I love Japan. Like, it was just such an amazing country and yes. the culture is so different, which is... I've been back yeah. five times, yeah. Oh, I would well. love to take my sons and, yeah, and show them around as well. Well, Beautiful. hopefully the borders are opening soon. We'll be back into it. Yeah. All right, so um, this podcast is about people passionate about working with assistive tech, which I know that you are, but could you tell us your story? Where did your passion for working with um, particularly assistive tech kind of start? So I transitioned from, I, I worked in the acute hospital for um, my early career um, until I was about 10 years post-grad. And uh, then I transitioned to working in the community about five years ago. And quite early on, uh, it was a big, big change going from acute to, to community work, a big learning curve. And I had a young girl uh, by young, I mean, she was about 15 at the time. And uh, her mum was talking to me about how she said, Nikki, you know, she can't uh, put down an umbrella. So she's walking to the bus stop each morning. And when it rains, uh, she can half open her umbrella or she can pop it open with a button, but she doesn't have the strength in her hands to be able to close the umbrella what would you suggest? And I was like, there has to be a solution for this problem. I love, I feel bad describing it like this, but I love a, a puzzle <laughs> and, a, and um, you know, a challenge. And I'll say that to people, I love a challenge, you know. So someone might ask me for a solution on the spot and I'll go, I don't know, but let me get back to you. And that was, I remember it was a really defining moment because I went, there has to be a solution for this. It's so simple. There's an umbrella with an auto open. Surely there has to be an umbrella with an auto close. It would be the same mechanism. And a simple Google search later, and we found an umbrella that had a pop button to open, and then you press the same button again, and it popped it closed. 
And it was really, it was, you know, something that was so simple. It wasn't from a disability specialist store. We just found it on eBay, um, ordered a couple to try for her. She picked her own colour to match her school uniform that she really liked. I got one for me too. And it came and it solved that problem instantly for $20. And it just was that first moment of, wow, there are so many products out there and problems that we don't even know that exist at the moment. And there are solutions that are so readily available that we don't know about. There's this just endless world of AT out there. So that was that was what really started the whole, um, everyone asked, how, how did I get into AT and um, why did we start doing it? And that, that was the defining moment for me that, that we could solve that problem that previously I, I would have just thought, oh, no, that there's nothing available. Well, no, actually there is if you look. So, yeah, yeah. that's how it all started. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful story. So you've worked in, with lots, and I know you do other areas of OT as well, but in the area of AT, assistive technology, uh, what kind of AT are you most passionate about? So you talk about, you know, I can see your your sign there at the back for AT Fridays. Yeah, um, I and <laughs> I know you um, run that group, but um, but but yeah, you you work with other types of assistive technology. What what kind of areas do you work in, and what what are you most passionate about? Uh, so we can, if if you're talking about what I'm most passionate about, I do love I do love a good wheelchair prescription, <laughs> um, but. Even, I mean, there's so many, what I love about OT in general is that there's never two days that are the same. I'm a very, I'm very flighty. I'm very fickle. I don't, <laughs> so I love that, you know, you know, um, two people are the same, no two solutions are the same. Even if you've got two people, same backgrounds, um, same condition, their AT solution is not going to be the same. Their wheelchairs are not going to be the same. Um, so I love, I guess that there is just so many different options out there and be it one day I might be doing a wheelchair and the next day I might be doing a hoist and the next day I might be looking for on Google for something that's really cheap um, but is really life-changing for that one person. So I just love that there's so many different solutions and options available and it's not just me doing the same thing over and over because I get bored. <laughs> and, and it's kind of the one one of the things where, you know, I'll go to America and other places and you see other solutions and you're like, oh, if only we had that in Australia. Like there's mm -hmm. there's things out there, aren't there, that you're just like you've got to look beyond our blinders of, of what we think is the answer because Absolutely. there's new things yeah. all the time isn't there absolutely yeah even just if i walk around the shopping center on the weekend you know i'll sometimes come across things and be like that's amazing like i haven't seen that before um you know that's that's that constantly occurs um it always surprises me that, that there's so much innovation especially over the last few years i feel like there's been major major developments in innovation and, and the tech space over the last couple of maybe that's because that's you know <laughs> that's what you're looking for <laughs> or recently you know i've only been in the at space for five years um so maybe i've just noticed the difference in that time but yeah i i love that there's there's so much that's always going on and changing and evolving yeah so looking bigger than maybe just at can you tell us your why why do you do what you do what gets you out of bed in the morning what you know why are you here being an ot um I love, it sounds a bit cliche, I love making a difference to people's lives. Um, I love um, seeing, you know, that something that seemingly, I've done that seemingly very small has made a big impact on someone's life. You know, that they're so, now somehow able to do that task, whatever it is, independently when they couldn't do that before. And you see that, you know, sometimes People, you know, it just, it is what it is and they don't give thanks or whatever, but you see the difference it makes in their lives. And other times people are just, I'm constantly amazed at how grateful people are. And I feel like I haven't done anything at all half the time or I've done something so, you know, insignificant and small, but to that person, it's made such a huge difference. And that's, that's really great. Yeah. Yeah. I can appreciate that. And um, like you said, sometimes our, our clients can't speak it, um, you know, verbalize it. But seeing that light turn on in their face um, mm -hmm. when people have some horrible conditions and then then they can do something they couldn't. Like the first time, you know, someone's getting walking who hasn't been able to and the, the, their eyes, their, the light in their face, it's just yeah, amazing, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's, we are very, re in a very rewarding role, I mm -hmm. think. Um, so 
what's the most, if you had to say what's the most rewarding piece of AT um, in your career, is there anything in particular that comes to mind or some of your greatest achievements um, in that kind of space? Um, I think I would say the greatest achievement, and there's, there's three clients that are coming um, to mind that are all quite similar, although very, very different. <laughs> Uh, but it was a similar experience. All three um, have severe, severe um, disabilities, um, uh, limited ability to communicate. And all three of those families have had a horrific time, uh, absolutely a horrific time with the, um, um, their experience with uh, health and, and people helping them and people coming in and and telling them what to do. And I take a very different approach with those clients in that I'm like, okay, so all of them, as I said, you know, in the bio, we don't take people on until they're about that 15 years of age. So, and uh, all three of these clients that I'm thinking of have had severe disabilities since birth. So, you know, their families have been with them and cared for them, obviously, for at least that amount of time, 15 years. And I come in and I'm I'm very new to the family and I see that that wariness straight up that um, you know, oh here's another one, another OT that's coming in to tell me what to do or to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. Um, and I don't do that with clients and especially those that level of, of disability, um, who am I to presume that I know better um, when they've lived this for 15 years and they know what works for their person. And it's usually a matter of treading, you know, softly, softly with those people and just saying, okay, what, what is it that I'm here for? And I just, I just do what they're asking me to do at that moment in time. And I very much listen to their ideas and, and how they want it to occur, which might not um, have been how I would have gone about it, but you need to take that lived experience into context. And then we come up with a solution that they're happy with together. And it might be through that process, I suggest something, they go, nah, not interested. Okay, what? let's look at something else then. So, um, and then through that, you develop the rapport and the trust with those families. And then they, they come back and they then ask you for more, oh, could you actually help us with this now? Could you actually help us with this now? And you just make that little bit of headway because they know that you're willing to listen to them and to trust them and to not come in and be that person who's telling them what to do. And I think there, then when you can get, you know, you can give a solution that they're looking for because they will only come to you when they, they can't figure it out themselves. Um, and, you know, I've so, all of these clients actually have... Uh, prior to me had had sort of given up on OTs um, that had such bad experiences, you know, so five or six years, no OT. And so they, they're only willing to come and try someone else again if, if there's really something that they need help with. Um, so, yeah, I find that very rewarding to then have those clients turn around and go, oh, my goodness, like, thank you. Like, we haven't had someone like you before. And then they, they will contact you again. And to me, being invited back is... Um, the most sincere form of flattery and thank you that I could ask for. Um, and when you see the difference that it makes and the solutions that family members come up with, but they just need a bit of help to implement. And you think, man, I didn't think of that. <laughs> like um, the way that they look at problems. I, I find that very rewarding. And the, yeah, those three clients that I'm thinking that I'm thinking of on those occasions um, I found it to be a very, very rewarding experience. And I'm still, I'm still servicing all those three clients and have done for um, several years now. So, And I guess the way that I look at it is you'll walk into a situation and someone will say, right, here's the six things that I need. And I say, uh, well, I don't say no, but at the time I'm like, let's just get some wins. Let's just build that relationship. So like ah, you said, absolutely. hearing the priority, let's, but getting six things at once is not kind of a safe place to be anyway, generally, let's just work on one thing. And then, which I think is a bit different to those in the acute sector and um, some of the other areas, isn't it? Like in the community, because we know that we could be working with them for years, mm. we can take that time sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm guessing that there's times when things don't go to plan. 
So how, <laughs> how do you overcome challenges when, when those times come? Uh, I never, um, you know, if there's a problem with something, I go, okay, let's, let's have it. Tell me what's going on. So I'm always open to people coming back to me and saying, there's a problem, you know, I'm not going to turn around and go, well, no, there's not, that should work <laughs> perfectly for your needs. Um, so, um, and often it's just about people, people want to feel listened to and heard. Um, and then I, I, it's asking what that specific problem is. And sometimes it's not even a problem with the assistive technology itself, but, you know, it might be something else. Um, there is what you hear that saying of as soon as you change something, change one thing, you'll change, something else needs to be changed. So sometimes it's a matter of, oh, we, we put this great device in place and we didn't think about the impact then it's going to have on Y. So, um, you know, X or Y, I mean, not, not Y. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I guess it's just always being about approachable and willing to listen and willing to go, okay, well, let's, let's look at this and let's come up with a solution and not just going, oh, but I did that. I'm going to, you can just deal with it now. So, um, yeah, I don't like people, people not being happy with what I've done. <laughs> so I, I would always go out, um, you know, I've got a client this afternoon who um, I put in, uh, a platform step four and she she tripped up on the weekend you know so as soon as I got that text yesterday I, you know so and so tripped up this on the weekend can you come out and have a look at it I was like okay I'm making that a priority I'm going out let's look at this um, let's look at what the problem is what's going on and what we need to do to fix it um, rather than going on oh, no way I put that step in and that step should be working fine so um, yeah so that's I'm I'm straight onto those those things so I got that call yesterday I'm going out this afternoon at 4 30 so <laughs> you know at the so end of your work day but it sounds like there's two parts to that one part is you try not to take things personally and just put on your detective hat and take those next steps and yeah you know, this isn't personal but then the second step is like uh you said I get out there quickly and and her situation could be you know falls risk and things like that but I, I wonder how important that time frame is to get you know, respond instead of letting things simmer and turn into something. Yeah, that's right. If something goes, well, and, and stuff stuff will go wrong when you're working in this space. It does. And as, as much as I would like to never make a mistake, it's going to happen, you know. Um, and I, uh, you know, I've had cases where we have a client in common that we've been working with where, where something went wrong and, and the client was on the phone and, and we were out there that day, you know, making sure that there was an interim solution to make sure that client was safe and then looking at, okay, how can we, we work this out long term? Stuff, so stuff does go wrong. And I mean, it's, um, I try not to take it personally. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, damn it, why didn't I do that right? You know, um, but then it just becomes more of a puzzle to me and more of a like, right, okay, I'll, I need to solve this. Like, what is this? Let's get on this and not just leave it with the person and go, well, you know, that should have been the best solution. So, you know, you're on your own now. So I think always admitting and, and you know, apologising if, if, if something does go wrong. Apologising doesn't mean accepting liability. It just means, I'm sorry you had this experience. Now let's, let's get on to it and work out what we can do. Which is interesting when I've heard, uh, I was just on Facebook today and someone said there's a, a someone's calling themselves a solution specialist um, <laughs> from an, an equipment supplier. And it makes me kind of, I, I would be you very hesi yeah. <laughs> hesitant to take that title on because one, we shouldn't use the word specialist. And two, to say solution specialist is like, the AT is the answer. But when you look at models like the matching person to technology, you've got the environment, you've got the person, you've got the AT. It's this big triangle. It's not just the AT. It has to match, doesn't it? Absolutely. Or else it it, yeah. it does fall apart. And it's not always that we've done anything wrong. We might, mm. there's just more to the picture yeah, maybe that absolutely. we had to explore. Yeah. So do you have uh, any right that, um, Just you? what you were saying um, that you put your detective hat straight on. That's what I built. I'm like, right. Let's, let's on here, you know, I become Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, besides Sherlock Holmes, do you have any role models or anyone you enjoy learning from to, to help upskill yourself and anyone you enjoy working with or anything like that? Well, there are many people that I enjoy working with, such as yours truly. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to say that, as, as you well know, uh, you and I are in a, a 
peer mentoring group with three other of our colleagues. Um, and I consider all of you um, uh, very knowledgeable and skilled in your areas. Um, and I, I look up to all four of you and I know that, you know, we'll often email and go, you know, I've got this problem, you know, everybody needs a supervisor or a mentor or someone to bounce off um, ideas with. And I love that we have that group. There are so many, I'm not in competition with anybody. Um, I don't need to be in competition with anybody, but they're in even just the hunter alone. There are so many knowledgeable OTs that we can reach out to and go, hey, you know, I need help with something. You know, I can't, the area of AT is so huge that I can't possibly know all the answers. I've not mm. come across every piece of equipment. Um, you know, just there or alone, the number of pieces of equipment that I've come across that I haven't seen before, you know, there, there's multiple already and we're in February. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the people I look up to are the other OTs around me that have been working um, for a long time and are really skilled in their um, in their areas of practice um, and that are happy to share their knowledge their knowledge with me and with my other colleagues as well and and the people here without it being a, oh but hang on I'm in competition with your business or you're you're in competition with my business there's none of that that sort of happens so yeah I because it is such a challenging area I wouldn't want to do life alone and I guess that's part of the reason why I have a business mm -hmm. as well is because I want to be hanging around people that inspire me and encourage me to do think differently and you know open our minds it's really important to have that connection isn't it absolutely yeah 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 all right so if if you knew someone and I know you've got a, a number of staff but someone interested in working in AT is there any one sentence advice that you would give to people uh, interested in working with assistive tech I would say I'm thinking how best to, because I've got to phrase it into one sentence. I, mean, I always say in three sentences. What well, I do it in three. It's okay. Three. You know that. <laughs> um, I would say do it, like absolutely do it. AT is, it's wonderful and it's amazing and there's not enough people working in it. <laughs> um, but do it with a bit of caution. Like don't go out and start prescribing massively complex things because stuff can go wrong. And if you're not, I don't know, humble is probably the wrong word, but if you're not, um, if you don't have a good element of fear about it, then, then um, it's not good. You have to realise that stuff can go wrong and what your limitations are and you have to make sure that you have help and that you're working within your scope. The number of times I see, you know, posts online or whatever and, um, and I think, you know, hello, I'm a new grad and I'm working in this space and I don't have a supervisor and I'm prescribing this really complex piece of equipment that's worth $50,000. What should I look for? Or what what brand should I test? And I'm like, no, no. Man, you know, I'm, pass it I'm all for, and, you know, I've, I've hired new grads, but that you need to provide, you know, if you're working in this space, you have to provide the support to them. And I'm very, you know, Kaz, I'm very particular about, um, education and um, supervision and support um, and developing OT's knowledge and supporting them to work in this area um, so that they're, um, they're learning as they go and they're, um, they're not going to get into trouble or, or prescribe something that's going to cause an issue. I've seen things go wrong when people have done that. Um, so I think you need, you need to be wary, but abs yeah, definitely go, go ahead, but get support to do it. Yeah, and it's like you said, we know that things will go wrong, like with every complex wheelchair delivery, something's going mm -hmm. to need tweaking. We know that, but we have our steps and our processes of how we resolve it, whereas some of the newer therapists might not know where to from here. And I, I do take referrals where the therapist has just walked away and just said, I can't do it. And it's like before jumping in the deep end, start with the simple might be a good thing to do to get yeah, familiar and build absolutely. your confidence and your competencies um, and, and definitely connect with supervision and training and other things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so I've written to you and asked you about your top three lessons that you would like to share. So I'd love to hear those. So we've probably, I've probably touched on, 
on some already. So the first one would be, um, I was talking about before, listening to the client. So, um, you know, people that have lived with disabilities for a very long time, especially um, or person can't advocate for themselves and their family, you need to listen to what it is that they want and what's going to work for them in their situation. And if they don't want something, uh, even if you think it might be the best solution, then there's no point in prescribing it because they're not going to use it. And then they're going to have a house full of equipment um, that they're not going to use. Um, and then when you try and prescribe someone else, it'll be like, oh, no, but we got that other piece and I'm, I didn't use that. So I don't want any more stuff filling up my house. Um, two, I would say Google is your friend. Um, the number of times, so we had, I talk about this story a bit. Um, we often get with our segment that we run here that I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, call it AT Fridays. We, we get emails from lots of OTs around Australia and, and people saying, oh, you know, have you, ha have you got a piece of AT that would assist with this problem? Um, and most of the time it's like, no, nah, I've never heard of something, but let, you know, I'll get on Google and within five minutes, we've got 10 different solutions and we go, hey, we just found these online, give them a go, you know, and they're all um, pretty cheap, uh, you know, eBay, Catch, Amazon, those sort of sites. You can find stuff, even Kmart, um, more even just like, you know, little handheld items and things that are not necessarily designed for someone with a disability. Um, even like, like one of my favourite pieces of AT ever is a set of different coloured measuring cups that you could get from Target for $2, like so cheap and so effective to help people to learn the concept of measuring or get around the concept of measuring if they can't do it. So Google stuff, like if, if it's just, and you know, it'll take you a bit to come up with the search terms, but once you put the different things in, you'll, you'll get hits. I guarantee you'll get hits. There's never been a, a problem that I couldn't solve that way. Um, and the other one is, we've touched on this as well, is never stop learning. Like there is so much innovation happening in the AT space, new products being developed all the time, products being improved all the time, that you really need to keep up, make sure you keep up your education, um, look at what new evidence is coming out, new products, um, why they've changed different bits. You know, there's so much um, there's so much out there that you can learn um, and you need to make sure you keep on top of that. There you go, top three from here. Okay, so number one was listen to the clients because they're the experts. Yeah. Yep. Number two, Google's solutions. There's solutions out there and don't try to reinvent the wheel because it's probably Absolutely. there. Absolutely, and, and not necessarily just from disability stores too. Like you'll find stuff in the mainstream mm. that will help. Mm. Yeah, yep. and always keep learning. That's it. Yeah, they're fantastic. So are there any? Favourite quotes that inspire you in particular? Um, I would say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you've got someone that isn't on the latest piece of, um, you know, the latest pressure cushion out there, they're on an older style model, but they've been using that model and getting it replaced every time um, it reaches the end of its lifespan every few years, and they've been doing that for 10 or 15 years, don't try and go, well, let's try it. Why are you going to try and put them on a new cushion? Go, if that's working well for you, let's keep on it because it's when you start changing things when you don't need to that you're going to end up in all sorts of trouble. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep, uh, very, very wise words of advice there. So over to you. Is there anything in particular that you would like to tell us about, about your business and the things that you're up to? Uh, well, the main thing, oh, I'm going to give a little plug to our segment, which if you can see our tiny <laughs> sign here, 80 Fridays. Uh, it's very rudimentary sign. Um, and it was done quite specifically in that manner. Um, so this was a, a segment we started and it all stemmed from the girl with the umbrella. Um, and this was about, oh, how long ago? Maybe two years ago now. Um I came up with this idea of going, there's all these products out there that we don't, you know, know about or come across, the coloured measuring cups, the umbrella, that it would be great to just kind of give a little review about and talk about and get the idea out there to um, other therapists, but also mainly, you know, the main, you know, clients, people that might be looking for this stuff for their elderly mother, um, that sort of thing, to go, you know, check out this thing. Uh, it's really cost effective. You can source it yourself and this is how it works. But also we, we um, 
provide uh, quite a, a realistic overview. So we'll tell you what about it isn't good and what about it doesn't work. Um, and we've started, we, we kind of then started getting a cult following and it ended up bigger than Ben-Hur. So um, the segment's called AT Fridays and we review a different product every Friday. It's an OT or one of the AHAs um, and we do a little um, segment on it. Uh, and we now get um, people emailing us, messaging us saying, can you, you know, can I send you something? Can you review it? And we're very um, direct in our response of, yes, you're welcome to send us something uh, and we'll review it, but we're going to be doing an honest review. We are not paid. We never will be paid. Um, we'll accept your product, but then it goes into our, we have our trial stock here and it's, it's there to either trial with clients or we, we pass it on to a client in need um, if we're not going to use it um, or it, gets chucked if it's if it's crap <laughs> uh, and we will say you know but we will we will give it a review but we're going to talk about what we like about it and what we don't like about it um so this is not a paid you know <laughs> I'm not an influencer uh, <laughs> yes you are you are an influencer so how do people connect to AT Fridays I know I connect to um Action OT on Facebook as well as the NDIS OT uh, group yeah. on Facebook, but so the, main, the, main not... forum, the main forum is the NDIS. Uh, sorry, is the is our Action OT uh, Facebook page, which is where we post um, every week. We're we're aiming to do some kind of changes there this week, but as I said, I I'm not up with the socials and the. <laughs> That is not my area of expertise. Um, so I need to do some looking into that this year. But that's where they're all, and they're all kept there on Facebook. So if you go back um, in time, in history on our page, you'll get every video that we've done and you can watch them back. Um, yeah, but check it yeah. out. We, and it's it's just something we do for fun. And we um, we just like getting the info. It's the, the whole idea and premises behind it is to get the information out to people. Yep. Yeah, I love the products you show because they're things that I wouldn't have looked for because I have in my mind, this is what a shower chair looks like. This is what a shower stool, I'll go to the shop and get that. Yeah. So it's great to have just the, those, our eyes widen to see actually there's different ways of doing things Yeah, um, because you got to keep learning. That's it. And they're the products that I love doing, the ones that are a bit, you know, left of mainstream that we've just happened across randomly and gone, you know and then order, I've got to try this ordered it in tested it out um you know picked it up at the shops on the weekend whatever yeah so um yeah they're definitely my favorites as well yeah well thank you Nikki for coming along today it's been a pleasure and a privilege and we'll put your contact details in the bio so people can get in touch if they want to but otherwise connect with Nikki through Action AT Action OT um yeah. on Facebook and um, yeah, I'd love to keep connecting and seeing you around. Thanks. No worries. Thanks, Thanks for, for having on. me, Kaz. <laughs>